Hi guys and welcome to another instalment of the Hero Rune Guide. In this episode we'll be taking a look at every goblin's best friend, Kozar Bonebreaker. Now that Kozar is no longer part of the VIP exclusive portal, he is available to everyone and so what better way to celebrate that fact than to do a rune guide on him. So he's an incredibly powerful hero, uh, he can be very tanky if you rune him right. He's one of the most used heroes uh, in my roster and he's extremely good for PvE and PvP, particularly PvP. But he does need a slightly different rune setup for each of those and that's what we're going to cover here. But before we get into the two rune builds that I want to show you guys, uh, just as we've done with the other heroes in the past, I want to go through Kozar's traits and his abilities. So, first up his traits. His first one there is the fact that he's a slow hero. Most of you, I'm sure, will know what that means. One thing I want to draw attention to, though, here for Kozar in PvP is that because the defensive teams will often have fast heroes on at least one, someone like MK or BD, um, the attacks that they do on Kozar will often result in a revenge attack and that will normally result in their death. So it's kind of like a, a free kill thrown in there whenever they attack him. So it's a pretty good feature uh, for Kozar. Bone Rattler 3, he has a chance to purge on basic attacks. Now what that means is that he gets to strip buffs away from the defenders. Whoever he attacks, there's a 50% chance that he will strip off any buffs from him. So that's quite useful when you go in against someone like Furnace who's got Taunt on. Next is Dwarven Plague. This is not a particularly useful trait at all. I don't think I've ever seen any kind of use from this. Um, he has a chance to disease Dwarves on basic attacks. So not particularly special. Now this one's particularly good. So Goblin Alliance 3, an increase of health of 15% for each Ogre and Goblin ally. He also has a chance to defend allied Goblins. That's debatable whether that's useful or not because sometimes he can throw himself in front of Goblins and he quickly gets worn down. His energy, his health quickly gets worn down and he ends up dying. Um, but the increase in 15% for all of the goblins means is extremely useful in PvP if you're taking along a goblin crit team to help you auto run various dungeons. He can help keep those, those other heroes alive. There are currently no other ogres in the actual game. Hopefully Dungeon Boss will add them at some point. Currently it's December 2016 so you know, fingers crossed there'll be some more ogres added in at some point down the line. And then lastly, for his traits, we have the bigger they are. So any boost to his max HP will also be reflected in his attack with a cap at 200%. So if you bring along in your team someone like Bovis or Yoko, who give a 15% boost to hit points for all warriors, that will actually boost up the damage output from Kozar. Also, if you've got someone like Dagrund, who casts as Dwarven EMT, his healing ability, which also increases max hit points, then you'll again get that bonuses and attack. For his abilities then, we've first off got Home Run. Everyone will know about Home Run. This is what he's famous for, especially in PvP. This is what you will either be using to win your matches or this is what you'll be seeing on your replays when you get your ass kicked. Um, so it's a ranged physical armor piercing attack on all enemies that will reduce their defense as well. It puts a debuff on them. So it goes straight through armor. Armor doesn't count towards this attack. So you can imagine, there you go, you've immediately got an awesome uh, ability. But the fact that it also then gives a defense debuff for the rest of your team to follow up, someone like MK to clean up the rest of the uh, survivors, you can see just how powerful this attack is. It's extremely useful. His second one, triple melee physical attack on an enemy, which provokes them into attacking you next turn. Very rarely ever get to use this during PvP, um, and in PvE you'll use it, as you'll see some from some of the footage, you get to use it on the end bosses, so it can be quite useful. Um, and then finally, suppression, so a melee physical slam on an enemy, which extends all energy cost permanently, so that would be quite useful uh, against those end bosses again, especially on the likes of Boss Island. Right, now on to the reason why we're all here, the rune builds. So. The first one I'm going to show you guys is a PvP attack build, which I'm going to nickname Shock and Awe. The whole purpose of this build is to do massive damage to the defense team in order to one-shot as many of those defending heroes as possible. You're using with Zen to speed him up because Kozar on his own in a PvP attack isn't particularly useful because he's a slow hero. Stats-wise, your primary focus is going to be attack. You don't need anything as high as this. As long as you've got 4,500 to 5,000 attack, then you're looking good. You'll have a really strong Kozar. 
Your secondary that you're looking for there is crit chance, so you want to get that as high as possible. The rest of the stats are incidental, and they will just get boosted up along with whatever runes that you're putting on there. Runes-wise, it's a similar, stat, similar setup to what we've seen before with someone who wants to do a lot of damage, in that your preference is going to be power runes. If you can't get power runes, then you want to use battle runes. And on each of these, you are looking at two attack, and then as a preference for your third skill, uh, third ability is going to be critical. So what we've got here is exactly that for each one of these, for the fire and also the nature rune. And then for your blue, you want a critical with a secondary of attack. The third ability, you can have whatever, but it's very important that you stack that attack on this one. The second build that I want to talk to you guys about is one for PvE, and I'm going to call this the Meat Grinder. The purpose of this one is to support the Goblin team during campaign runs, so on stuff such as Boss Island. But in order to do that, you need to enhance his tankiness because he can get killed fairly easily on those levels, especially when he's jumping in front of goblins all the time to protect them. So what you need to do is pile on the life and defense. In order to do that, then we need to swap out one of these purple runes for a bulwark, and we need to swap out one of the uh, this only blue rune for a life rune, and make sure that your secondary abilities on there are either life or defense. Stats-wise, you're targeting a defense of around 2,800, the higher the better, and health of around 12,500. Whilst we watch Kozar in action with some in-game footage, I want to go over a few pointers. So first off, remember that Kozar is not a goblin. He will not benefit from the effects that the likes of Bramble give out to the rest of the goblins or Nub Nub and so on. I see a lot of people complaining, saying, well, why doesn't he? He's an ogre. He's not a goblin. He's the friend to the goblins. The goblins aren't necessarily his friend. In PvP defense, I'd say that Kozar's not an especially good choice. He's slow and he'll probably end up getting killed long before he even gets a chance to take a turn. For PvP synergies, you're looking at using Ember because she will boost his attack up and it'll be incredibly powerful. It can even blast through the likes of Kai Surf's up. Shade prevents Dark Heroes from being debuffed, which is useful against Kai when they're on the defense, so bring him along if you have him. Zen, of course, is critical to speeding up Kozar to make sure that he's useful during a PvP attack. Because again, otherwise he's a slow hero, as I mentioned, and he's not going to be able to do anything particularly useful. And for PvE, you're pretty much looking at bringing Kozar along to help protect the goblins and give them extra health. He's really useful for doing auto runs on Boss Island and any other difficult dungeons that you might be facing. That's all for now, guys. Please do leave comments, questions or suggestions in the comments section below. I'll always try to answer. Remember to check out the rest of my YouTube channel for more Dungeon Boss videos or search Zombie Dungeon Boss in Google or YouTube for more. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.